during our first video we did not really shoot any charts we wanted to make a chart film just for you guys here we go we're going to start by showing you guys some of the stabilization and dirt issues the film have natively. You can see how unstable the shot is with a chart, right? So it's not the shooting that's the problem. The purse are all over the place. Now we're going to go ahead and stabilize it like every shot we're going to see. And now we're going to punch in. You can look at that dirt on the right side. Look at that. That dirt is related to the film. That is not us. That is on the film, all right? So it's kind of weird. Next, we're going to look at resolution, shooting this at 200 ISO, and we're going to go ahead and punch this in and show you that you can clearly see 800 lines of resolution, which is pretty good. This is kind of where Kodak 500T kind of sits. The 500T is a little bit crisper, but not a whole heck of a lot. The grain here is a problem, but it's not making the film have less resolution, which is kind of cool, actually. Now for the first major chart, color chart, 5.6, 100 ISO, you will notice that at the beginning of this, it was very overexposed. We had major issues getting this film to scan without it being very overexposed. Now, the good news is that our digital imager is extremely good at recovering data, which you can see here, but it's still a very dense negative at 100 ISO. At 200 ISO, it's a little bit less dense. We're kind of getting some data there. It's a little bit better, but it's still definitely overexposing the imager no matter what we did. And the color chart is just the same as the 100 ISO. They look exactly the same. So we can recover the color at 200 ISO, but if you notice, the grain structure has not changed at all between 100 and 200 ISO. So we're still dealing with a very grainy film stock no matter what. Next, of course, is 400 ISO. And 400 ISO, we're at F11, and it kind of looks better, actually. Because we're having to do less work in digital post to kind of make it look good, it kind of has less grain. <laughs> it's actually kind of a funny thing. The 100 and 200 ISO seems to have a little bit more grain than 400 ISO when graded properly. So that's an interesting side note that I noticed while doing this test. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a person to the shot so that we can look at skin tones in the background with a grayscale chart. So here's 100 ISO 5.6 with a person graded and you will see that it holds up pretty good actually. You will see that the black in the sweatshirt is, is pretty there. Um, there's, there's a good amount of dynamic range in that chart. You know, there's no issues there with that chart. So this looks actually relatively good. 200 ISO, you know, definitely again, a little better on the scanner and looks relatively good as well. Notice the contrast in the background, the building, the wall, the, the wall on the right side, the little fence there. Notice all that and the contrast on the jacket for the 400 ISO, which we're gonna get up to right now. Cause the 400 ISO seems to be a little more contrasty. Better off the scanner, right? Looks better off the scanner, but this shot seems to be a little bit more contrasty. It definitely pops better due to a little bit less grain though. Look at that background. It's a little more poppy than the 100 and 200 ISO. So I don't know. I wanted to show you guys kind of what we were up to and what the stock looked like when overexposed and exposed properly, something we hadn't done in our first video. We're gonna have way more videos about Oro coming up. I got tons of more film left, so stick around for more of that. And have a good one.